So I've got uh, the wonderful, wonderful, but very shy <laughs> Leanne with me today. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I just really enjoyed that session. It was amazing, wasn't it? Oh, it was really good fun. Like it was, uh, well, it was not just fun, it was uh, one of those songs, the first one. Oh, yeah, you like that one? Goosebumps. It's just, a lovely just song. In- incredible, incredible. Mary Gaucher from New Orleans, yeah. yeah. I think the original, there's about 98 verses in it, so I just sort of pared it down a bit. It's just incredible. I think you've improved on it. Bless your heart. Thank yeah. you. I, I really mean oh, that. Well, so, people that don't know you, and they all should know you, tell us a little bit about you. You can sort of tell me as much or as little about you as okay. you like. Okay. Well, I, I'm a professional musician. I've been lucky enough to get away with that for since I was a kid. And um, I've been lucky enough to have different bands and play with lots of big bands, which I really enjoy doing. When I was a little kid, we had about five records in 1969 when I was five and uh, they, they were like the Beatles combination but it wasn't actually the Beatles it was KTL <laughs> so it wasn't even them and the Motel collection which was KTL um, Sibelius Symphony Number no. 5 Stan Kenton Orchestra and Count Basie Orchestra with Vic Damone and that was the first voice that I can remember hearing with the Count Basie Orchestra doing Falling in Love with Love and it was all these cascading trumpets and, and congas and I was just apparently my mum said I used to stand in the middle of the lounge and just fizz to it and this guy's voice and eventually when I was 18 he came over to Hastings and uh, I took my mum to see him so that was lovely so yeah I, I just like always wanted to be in the middle of a big band I'm not really interested in like standing out in front with a frock and all that like being in the middle of the music and, being, and I've been lucky enough to travel the world doing that with various big bands. It's been amazing. And small bands. I've got my trio in there. So let's get straight into some... You told me something earlier that blew me away, and that is the uh, Buddy Guy. Yes. We were playing um, in Chicago, or Chicago, as you may want to say. No, in Chicago, and um, 1988... And he's got two clubs, I think it's on Belmont Avenue. One's called Blues, which with the dots, B-L-U-E-S. And then down the road is a jazz club, or for other types of music, called Blues, etc. And we were doing a gig there with this band. And then um, he was there, and he walked me arm in arm back to his club. He said, are you going to come to my club? I'm playing there tonight. I was like, yeah! And it's really funny, quite other members of the other band, they weren't that interested, so I sort of, you know, so I was really lucky, walking arm in arm with Buddy Guy up Belmont Avenue to his club and where he was playing and he got me up to do a song. And that was, um, I think we did Red House or something, and it was just, I couldn't remember, I was just shivering and fizzing again, so I've been very lucky, yeah. Well, you've also had uh, Paul McCartney on backing vocals on Yeah, Know Your Place, Paul, Know Your Place. Yeah, Yeah, that's (laughs) right. (laughs) (laughs) It was a charity song that I did with the incredible Peter Kirtley um, that he wrote called Little Children um, for the Brazilian street kids who get him systematically murdered just to make the beach look better. You know, the kids that go around and the thieves bless their hearts and from the slums. And there are death squads going around just killing them, just and tired, putting them in the boots. Just, so we did, uh, it's called Jubilee Action, amazing charity. And we did it at Windmill Hill at Paul McCartney's studio. And uh, Peter sang it, and we're both singing it. And Paul came in and asked if he could do some uh, backing vocals. He said, uh, you allowed him to? I said, well, you know, don't call us, we'll call you. Yeah. You know, but he was very nice. He was very, he was lovely, yeah. I mean, that's a bit of a buzz, isn't it? You know? uh, yeah, it's an amazing thing, an amazing thing. And talking of Brazil, you've done... Um, <laughs> Some work with Hospital Records, London Electricity. Yes, I have. I love it. Drum and bass, fast soul music. And the last, yeah, we played in Brasilia um, in this festival where Eminem was on. I saw Eminem, Pussycat. Yeah. And um, there's about 65,000 people on this. And it was, Brasilia is sort of like a concrete town in the middle of the desert. And it was built, I think the dictator who had it, had the whole town built in the shape of an aeroplane, if you look at it from the sky. And we were there, and um, I just remember all these fresh sugar cane little, little side places where they just roll some... And you're just drinking, like, concentrated sugar and half of the band just running around Brasilia as quickly as we could from that. And uh, but then um, Tony Coleman, who runs Hospital Records um, with Chris Goss, he got a big band together. So there was a 22-piece drum and bass orchestra live completely and we did Gastonbury and we did um, quite a lot of festivals in Europe that was fun that was very, the energy because it's you know 
and a lot of my mates on the brass and that. So there's a 22 piece orchestra playing drum and bla- bass live. That was, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting to do that for my job. It's lovely. Amazing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm so blessed. I'm really I get lucky. to do this as my job. I, I, I film and interview wonderful people. Oh, like you. bless. Well, so you're wonderful is... yourself. Don't, don't stop it. Oh, stop it, Stop will it. Ya. I'm blushing. Stop it, why don't you? Um, and then you're quite famous as well for doing a regular at Ronnie Scott's in London. Yes, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I've been playing there when Ronnie was alive. Ronnie came to see me at a club called the 606, which is another fantastic club in London. It's, it's brilliant. Um, I'm there in a couple of Sundays. And, um, and I didn't know he was there till after, and, and I got a phone call the next day, and it was th- that really embarrassing case of, like, hello, Leanne, this is Ronnie Scott, and I said a few expletives thinking it was someone messing about. And he, said, he did that thing, he said, phone Ronnie Scott's, bye. And then I phoned Ronnie Scott's and he was there. So it was like, because I thought it was a mate, you know, impersonating him. And uh, he, off- he said he'd been to see me, he offered me a week um, supporting George Coleman, and that was like the start of it. That was 1992, so I've done 30 years there. And then we, in those days, you'd do a week, and then sadly he died, and then Peter King, who was his partner, who championed me so brilliantly, one day he phoned up and said, I think it's time you did headlining. You know, you did a headline act, and then he was a cockney. And uh, I was like, oh, OK. And I had people coming and supporting me, and it's a, it was a humbling experience and I've been doing that for years. And now you just do... They don't necessarily have people for a whole week now because it's all changed. But I do a couple of gigs a year, one of them being on every Boxing Day and the day after, and they call it Leanne Cowell's Cold Turkey. Because <laughs> so, everyone's a little bit like that, you know. Every and you, Leanne, you're still in your hometown of Hastings. Yes. You still You still gig in little places here, don't you? Of course, yeah. That's, gigs, that's what I love... I love doing it. It's, I've never had that sort of um, trajectory, that, that thing about career and or wait till you can play bigger places. It's not been like that for me. I get far more nervous playing in a small space than when people even just see a massive faces, which is a buzz. And it's glorious and I, I really count my blessings. But like when my mum, she's no longer with us, but when she, because she was a professional singer, she sang with the Kay McIntosh bag band in the, in the 50s. And... Uh, then I was born and she gave, she gave up, I think. But she used to sing to me all the time and that's how I got this, into the singing because I used to play the piano. And she said, why don't you sing along to all your exercises? So I did. So I started... That's how I learned to sort of sing and play the piano at the same time. And uh, so I, I, I'm thankfully for that. But, um, yes, no, I love, I love my mum. She was a brilliant singer, so that's what she did. Great inspiration to you. Oh, enormous, enormous. She was... The, the, the loving side of my life, yeah. So, sort of growing up, what what music were you into? Like what Everything. Was, I, yes. I mean, I learnt classical piano and I loved listening to passionate, like Sibelius. I loved, you hear that in the films nowadays, a lot of film writers, or in those, in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, would copy Sibelius or pastiche Sibelius because he was so, such an emotive, passionate. Um, so, I like anything that's got, that moves me. I'm not academic and I haven't got much of like that sort of technical intelligence to really appreciate stuff that's you know, I appreciate it but doesn't, that doesn't move me if it's just for the sake of it's being clever I tend to bypass that I just like stuff that's rough and ready you know rough diamond rather than a polished gem really mm-hmm. um, that's where I find that's where the organic soul is isn't it when you want to go because you want to go out and be moved by someone yeah but, you know that's yeah, how exactly, I feel yeah, exactly you know, go home having had an experience what, what's the future hold for you? What, what are we expecting? Oh, my Lord. Well, I've had a break from making any records for five years. I'm starting to churn them out a bit, and I'm, happily so. i been working with the incredible producer, James McMillan, from Quiet Money Studios. He's amazing. Um, and we made four or five albums together. Um, he's now really busy doing some hip-hop stuff. Is it? Is it three cheers for rap music. Hip-hop? <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And, and so he's really busy, but I think we might, I might do a live trio album with my trio. Um, maybe not there, but I fancy doing something live yeah. for a while. But this whole, you know, the last two years have been living in La La Land, really. It's been a, like Brigadoon, isn't it? It's yeah. been an incredible yeah. situation for everybody. So everyone's still adjusting, still. It's, it take, took a big chunk out of everyone's sort of confidence and livelihoods obviously yeah. so it's there's a little bit of residue going on there 
for all my peers, all my friends as well, you know. Yeah. But I'm getting through it. And I think music can be quite a powerful entity and as much as it moves you, it can heal you as well. Yeah, I'm not being all cosmic, but it can. It makes. It's... I used to be a bit more cosmic. Yes, should I? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just sort of sit here every day. No, I mean I can be fit. I do suffer. I'm not afraid to admit it from depression, and I've got ADHD. But and I, like before a gig, I can be feeling terror, anxiety, not necessarily because of stage nerves, just something that's in my head. And I'm thinking, I genuinely think I can't get through this. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm tearful. I'm like, oh, gosh, a little bit like that. And I start playing, and then within like. 20 seconds of the song, it's, it's, it's cradled me. The song cradles me. Because the song's the boss. Yeah. And you're just, I think you're just there to just, you know, to sort of interpret it as best you can. Now, that, you, you've, got, you've got an incredibly booming, wonderful voice. Thank you. And I think we spoke, <laughs> spoke about this earlier. I think that detracts from your actual playing. You can, you're really good at playing. Oh, lovely. Thank yeah, you. No, yeah, so, no, I, do you know I, I mean? I think it. people kind of... They just focus on your voice I so think, much. I think that's been happening a, a lot, yeah. yeah you're a great I've had player. A few like, people in great. the time, oh, you can play the piano as well. And it's like, yeah, I can, because I started on the piano. Yeah. But it's, uh, no, I'm, thank you. I'll I don't think that. you can play the piano. You're bloody really good at it. Thank you very it's much like you're actually, you know, it's. it's well, I love it. it. But yeah, I think people kind of. Barely boil an egg, you know. Yeah. So that's my thing. But you, yeah, you, you, your voice is so massive and so soulful and thank you. Oh. husky and beautiful. And you're beautiful, and I'm going to end this interview now. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Thanks, Leanne. Thank cheers, you. cheers. And don't you know that the people in power, they would do anything, anything just to keep hold of their golden crown. You know it. I love everybody. But they could use 